Hello everyone, this is Live Life Well TV host Robert Landau. We're back with another episode of America's Greatest Personalities, and we, over the last number of episodes of this show here on Live Life Well TV, have been honoring great American TV game show hosts. So, try to say that fast five times. <laughs> Hey, you should be thankful I got it out well once. But anyway, this episode continues in our recent tradition where we're going to talk about the life and journey of Jean Rayburn. You might remember Jean. Stay tuned. So, we would like to acknowledge the following website, thefamouspeople.com. Let's first talk about Jean's childhood and early life. So, he was born uh, with this name, which of course was his given name. It was Eugene Jelyevich. Eugene Jelyevich. And he was born on December 22nd. 1917 in Christopher, Illinois. He was the only child of his parents who came from Croatia. His parents were Croatian. Jean's father passed when he was an infant and later his mother would move to Chicago where she would marry a guy by the name of Milan Rubessa. After her marriage, Rayburn was given his stepfather's name, so he was now called Eugene Rubessa. I kind of like the sound of that, actually. But, of course, years later, Eugene, or Jean, would choose his stage name Rayburn by randomly searching the phone book. Now, how about that? I've heard of a couple of famous personalities who did just that. And really, when you think about it, it's not a bad thing to do. Rayburn graduated from Lindblom Technical High School, where he was the senior class president. He acted in school plays like Robert of Sicily and Mrs. Wiggs of the Cabbage Patch, never heard of that one, and hoped to follow an acting career. Later, he attended Knox College, and during World War II, he was called for military service and he joined the U.S. Air Corps. Let's talk about his career because it was about to begin at this point in time. In the 1930s, Gene Rayburn moved to New York City and joined the National Broadcasting Company, better known as NBC, as a page. That used to be a great way for up-and-coming TV personalities to get their big toe wet in the industry. And then later, Gene would serve as an usher for the NBC Symphony Orchestra. He was also a well-known radio performer by this time and hosted popular morning drive time radio shows in New York City. And think about this. New York City was and still is a major market for radio, so good for you, Gene. He hosted a show by the name of Anything Goes and a show by the name of Rayburn and Finch with D. Finch on WNEW radio station. I'm from New York City. I know that station well. Uh, and it is now called WBBR. Rayburn's pairings with the other host of Rayburn and Finch and Anything Goes uh, would become very famous, those pairings of his with those two hosts. And the format was still followed when Rayburn left WNEW, uh, where D. Finch continued with a guy by the name of Gene Clavin. Passionate about acting, Gene started off by acting in films as well as doing theater. 
He landed the lead role in a Broadway musical you probably have heard of by the name of Bye Bye Birdie, when somebody you also have heard of by the name of Dick Van Dyke left the show. Gene also appeared in the plays Charles Nelson Riley, Craft Theater, and Montgomery, Robert Montgomery Presents. Gene's breakthrough, though, came in 1953 when he joined as an announcer on the television talk show Tonight with Steve Allen. So when Steve Allen was the Tonight Show host, the announcer, the voice that you would hear would be Gene Rayburns. Gene was associated with Tonight for the next three years and he ended up becoming a household name. I had no idea he was with The Tonight Show and so celebrated for being the voice of it. With The Tonight Show, he began a long association with game show producers Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. Next, he would appear on Robert Q. Lewis's show by the name of The Names the Same, which was an American game show produced by Goodson Todman for the ABC television network. In 1955, he replaced the original host, Jim McKay, on the NBC game show, Make the Connection. Later, Gene hosted popular shows like Choose Up Sides, Do Re Mi, and the daytime version of the show, Tic Tac Do. In 59, he was featured as a TV interviewer in the film It Happened to Jane. However, he did not take any credit for that role. In 1961, he became the host of the NBC radio program Monitor and was associated with the show until 1973. You know what amazes me about all of these game show hosts that we're covering in this series, episode after episode, is they have all had a rich resume, a rich history in other types of acting roles, many of them in music. I mean, these are very, very prolific guys. And when you think about it, that's kind of the energy you need to be a successful game show host. Throughout the 1960s and 1970s, Gene appeared on CBS's What's My Line? And to tell the truth as a panelist and his interviewing skills were definitely appreciated on those two shows. In 1962, he started hosting The Match Game a panel live game show on NBC, which continued till 1969. His unique energy, his unique mannerism, the different voices he would use, and the comic sketches he played made him a household name. In 1972, he hosted The Amateur's Guide to Love, a show by Hatter Quigley Productions, which unfortunately didn't last too long. In 1973, Match Game was revived, thank God, by Goodson Todman for CBS in California. Rayburn was invited to host the show, and he introduced a brand new format in so doing. The format, for the first time, included celebrities. Soon it became the number one game show on daytime television and continued to be so all the way until 1977. For three years, it was the highest rated show amongst all daytime shows. So soap, soap operas, sorry. <laughs> Along with his wife and Peter Emmons, he co-hosted the Drum Corps International Finals of the DCI Championship for two years, which were telecast nationwide on PBS in 1976, as well as 1977. In 1983, Match Game was revived once again after it was concluded in 1982, so it only took a year for them to revive the show. Now, as a part of the Match Game 
Hollywood Squares Hour. Rayburn once again hosted the match game segment and also sat on the panel of the Hollywood Squares segment. However, this time the show lasted for just nine months on NBC. During his stint with the U.S. Air Force, he was trained in meteorology, which he occasionally demonstrated on the match game. In 1983, he also hosted a pilot for Reg Grundy Productions called Party Line, which later became Bruce Forsyth's Hot Street on ABC. In 1985, Gene hosted the game show Break the Bank, but Joe Farago replaced him after 13 weeks. His last stint as a game show host was on The Movie Masters on AMC Cable TV, which ran from 1989 to 1990. Gene portrayed himself on Saturday Night Live, a late night television variety show that we all know, but uh, he did that back in 1990. Rayburn also appeared on several other talk shows throughout the late 1980s and 90s, including Vicky, The Maury Povich Show, The Late Show with Ross Schaefer. He would also appear on Howard Stern's late night TV variety show as one of the stars of his Hollywood Squares parody, Homeless Howie Wood Squares. Well, yeah, that sounds like something Howard Stern would definitely do. As far as Gene's personal life is concerned, he married Helen Tickner in 1940 and was married to her till her passing in October of 1996. Their only daughter, Lynn, was born in 1942. The great Jean Rayburn passed on November 29, 1999, due to congestive heart failure while he was at his daughter's home in Gloucester, Massachusetts. He was cremated and his ashes were spread in the garden of his daughter's home. The book, the Matchless Gene Rayburn by Adam Nedef highlighted many aspects of Gene's incredible life journey, starting from before his classic shows. It also drew attention to his life away from the cameras, including his relationships with match game panelist Richard Dawson and game show kingpin Mark Goodsman, Goodson, as well as his struggles in finding a job after Match Game finally concluded. His last television appearance was in 1998 when he appeared as an in, in an interview with Access Hollywood, uh, a program that was filmed with the 25th anniversary of the CBS game show Match Game. Some portions of his interview were rebroadcast on the Game Show Network in 2001. Gene was nominated for five Daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Host in a Game or Audience Participation Show. Despite his often poor health, he appeared in person to accept the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences in 1999. What an incredible guy. I don't know about you, but I used to watch the match game all the time. I can still see him um, emceeing with that, you know, that very thin, skinny microphone. And he was just a master at the art of improvisation. He could take anything that was thrown at him and really make us laugh at the same time as entertaining us. Gene Rayburn was a special light in Hollywood. I miss him. I don't know about you, but I do. But I'm very thankful that he did all of the amazing things that he did. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Robert Landau, Live Life Well TV host.